So the purpose of this video here back at Ronald Bog Park in Shoreline is to demonstrate some common deduction errors that students make when they're learning how to use the inference rules like modus ponens, disjunctive syllogism, addition, simplification, and so forth. Okay? So we'll just take turns showing common errors that people make. I'll, I'll give you an idea what I got in mind here. Here's, here's a very common error people make. They'll have a line of a proof that'll be, for instance, A wedge B. And from that, they'll, uh, they'll mistakenly apply simplification and infer the A. Sad. And the, it's easy to get confused, especially on a test, especially when you're taking a test, you have a time limit, you're nervous, you're, un, you're stressed, and you mix, it's just a mix-up. But anyway, if someone took A wedge B and inferred A and they called it simplification, that's, that's a common error. You can only apply simplification when the main connective is an AND. So can we X that simp out, maybe, or? Yeah. So you, can't you cannot apply simp when the main connect is a wedge. Only when the main connective is AND can you bring down the A as simplification. So that's an example, a common mistake that people make. Can you think of I, one? Yeah, I can think of one, uh, particularly early on with uh, the deduction rules. Let's say we have something like this. Mm -hmm. You know what the common mistake's going to be, don't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, at times, oftentimes people see that there's a modus tollens almost there, and they think they're going to be able to do a modus tollens to get that. But technically, modus tollens demands that you have the negation of this consequent. So I'm really not going to be able to do modus tollens unless I have tilde tilde s. Mm -hmm. I need to use double negation on this. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to be able to do modus tollens right away. At least not the way the, uh, the rules are being presented. Uh, and logic sometimes seems kind of picky, but what we're trying to do is, you know, we're actually trying to come up with a proof for how to show that if the premise information is true, the conclusion is guaranteed. And when we're actually trying to come up with a proof, we really need to embrace really the details of the rules. And there's more than one way to set up rules, of course. But if you're dealing with a particular set of rules, we want to be as precise as possible. Mm -hmm. And I like the idea of modus tollens. It says if this is false, then that's false. And this is not the way you say tilde s is false. Mm -hmm. And this says it, s is true. So I really would need the double negation. I'd need a tilde tilde s in here before I could do the modus tollens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, technically this may be equivalent to tilde tilde s, but it doesn't follow the rule. And one of the, the, the nature of a natural deduction system is that each step follows a precisely defined rule, and it follows the rule exactly as it's written. And also, there are no gaps. Every inference in the system is governed by an exact rule. So the, the goal is a sequence of inferences, each exactly following an exactly defined rule with no gaps. And that's why if we don't that's why if we don't follow the rule, it's not correct. I have students oftentimes tell me, well, it's obvious. Why do we just do it? Why do, why do we have to do this extra step? Keep in mind that what seems obvious to you today wasn't obvious a week ago. And what seems utterly confusing and befuddling today may be completely obvious to you two weeks from now. And the person sitting next to you or maybe your instructor, that person is going to see a lot of other things that's completely obvious. So what seems obvious is kind of contextual. We really aren't asking, does it seem obvious to you that the argument is valid or invalid? What we're trying to figure out is a proof for it. And what, uh, so we really don't want to say just because it seems obvious that these two should lead to tilde P. That's not the point. Because frankly, this that may seem obvious to a lot of people, it may not seem obvious to the others. We're actually trying to come up with a proof and not really relying on what seems obvious to us today. And, and the proof needs to simply be following exact mm -hmm. rules exactly as they're written. Okay. So that's good. That's a good explanation. So let's try this. Here's a common mistake. Someone has A horseshoe, B wedge C, and then they have tilde B, and they mistakenly infer C by disjunctive syllogism on 1 and 2. So, can you want to explain what the error is well, there? What this person is doing is using one of the inference rules on part of a line. The person is kind of ignoring this part and imagining doing a disjunctive syllogism here. Because this does fit disjunctive syllogism this fits, over here. Right. 
But this would be an invalid inference. If I did a truth table, I could prove that these two do not guarantee this. Mm -hmm. I want to. I need to limit myself when I'm using the inference rules to entire lines. Yeah. And I need to treat line one like a horseshoe. Maybe mm -hmm. I could do modus ponens on it if I had an A. Uh, I might be able to use some other horseshoe yeah. rules, but if this isn't going to work. Right. In other words, if you're going to apply disjunctive syllogism to a line, the whole line has to be P wedge Q. The, the P wedge Q has to be the whole line. It can't just be part of a line. And then the negation of the P lets you bring down the Q. But since this is only part of a line, we cannot apply disjunctive syllogism. And that's why we say that inference rules apply only to whole lines, not to parts of lines. Yeah. Another one? Sure. Okay. You tell me what's going to happen here to so some poor soul. Uh, I may the not be able to. Oh, no, you'll, you'll see this. Okay, so someone is going to bring down S, and they're going to call it DS. Or, or perhaps... I, I meant... Yeah. Whoops. Yep. Yeah, I really was not thinking there. Someone's going to bring down R, okay. and they're going to call it DS. Mm -hmm. What's the problem there? Well, this would be a valid inference mm -hmm. to infer R from R wedge S and not S. That would be valid, but it doesn't follow the rules. The rule says that if you have a P wedge a Q, and that's the whole line, and then you have the negation, the negation of the P part, then you can infer the Q part. And so right this, this form, yeah, right up there, this doesn't follow the rule exactly as it's written. And again, the purpose of a natural deduction system is to prove something using precisely stated rules, following the rules exactly as they're written. This doesn't follow the rule, so even though it's valid, it's not a correct move within the natural deduction system that we've defined. Now, if this were not R, we could bring down S. Okay. Mm, how about this one? We have uh, mm, we have a, a line H. Here's a very common move, mistake. Someone infers from H, H ampersand E, and they think that they're using addition. What's wrong with that? Well, you certainly can use addition, but this is an addition. Addition uses a wedge. Yeah. So if this was a wedge, it would work out okay. Yeah. Because if H is true, then H or whatever this would be would be the case. So the, the problem here would be the person's confusing the ampersand with the wedge on this particular rule. Right. In other words, addition lets you take a line, bring it down, write a wedge, and add anything you wish. But it doesn't let you bring a line down and add an ampersand and add something. And you can see that's not going to be a valid move. Just because H is true doesn't mean H and E is is true. That wouldn't be valid, would it? See, so that's a common mistake. Can you think of a common mistake? I got one other one. It's it's a little more subtle, and maybe okay. it's doesn't it, it's not quite as intuitive. But I do see this far too often. I see something like this. Using exportation. Mm, mm -hmm. Now, exportation, you recall, has like P O H, P O H. Mm -hmm. The order of the letters are the same. And yeah, we have ampersands and horseshoes, or two horseshoes. Mm -hmm. Shall I tell them what the problem is, or do you want to? No, go ahead. Well, can I use your pen? You may. The problem here is with the parentheses. One of my cat Parentheses here. just aren't in the right spot. This, with the blue parentheses, would be correct exportation. Uh, you want to, if you want to go from the ampersand horseshoe to the horseshoe horseshoe move, you want to have the, empress, the parentheses be around this, then the parentheses move over here. Just review the exportation uh, rule, and I find that oftentimes if people want to use exportation, they sometimes don't realize those, the positioning of the parentheses is really important. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I can get one in down here. Okay. That's a good, that's a good, good one. Here's a, com here's a common mistake. Um, someone has an A horseshoe of B, and then they have a B horseshoe of C, and they infer C horseshoe A. Let me move. So, 
th this is an attempted hypothetical syllogism. What have they done wrong? Well, you can indeed do hypothetical syllogism here. You have two horseshoes, two conditionals, and they kind of match up kitty corner. The problem is what hypothetical syllogism is going to give you will be the opposite of this. Yeah. Uh, the A kind of drops down, the C kind of drops down, if you will. Mm -hmm. It's just the order is mixed up. Yeah. So you can go A to B, B to C, A to C. Right. But you can't go A to B, B to C, C to A. This is sort of a backwards hypothetical. Mm hmm. An obvious common mistake is for someone to go from A horseshoe B and B and then infer A. Uh, this is an attempt at modus ponens or a misapplication of modus ponens. What have they done wrong? Well, it's an invalid inference. Uh, the, the fancy name would be affirming the consequent. Mm -hmm. uh, if they had these switched, it would be a perfectly good example of modus ponens. Mm -hmm. You might imagine a counterexample. If it's raining outside like here, the ground will be wet. Let's pretend that's true. And let's say that the ground is wet. Does that absolutely guarantee that it's raining outside? No. No. Not at all. The ground you know, maybe it rained five minutes ago. Mm -hmm. So the premises or the, these two lines are not guaranteeing that. Yes, it's not valid, is it? Okay. And it doesn't follow modus ponens because modus ponens says if you have P horseshoe Q and then P, you have to have the P part of the P horseshoe Q, then you can infer the Q. So, you know, from P horseshoe Q and the P part repeated, you infer the Q. What we've got here is a P horseshoe Q and the Q part repeated and someone has inferred the P. That's an invalid inference. There's a mix-up on modus tollens also. Let's, let's that. throw that up there real quickly. Someone might have not have A horseshoe B, then they might have a tilde A. From that, they might infer, mistakenly, a tilde B, and they might call it modus tollens. So what's wrong there? Well, just like this one up here, if these two were flipped, you yeah. would indeed have modus tollens. Yes. So modus tollens requires you have a conditional and then the negation of the consequence. Yes. This is actually called uh, denying the antecedent. Yeah. It's, a, it's a formal fallacy and it's going to be invalid. Yeah. So modus tollens says if you have the P horseshoe the Q and the negation of the Q here, if this were the negation of the Q, modus tollens says infer the negation of the P part. So this is sort of a backwards modus tollens or something. You've got the P horseshoe Q and the negation of the P and someone has inferred the negation of the Q does not follow the rule. You can do a quick counterexample again, the mm -hmm. same thing. If it's raining outside, then the ground is wet. Yeah. Let's say it's not raining. So we'll pretend these two are true. If it's raining, the ground gets wet, but it's not raining right now. Does that absolutely guarantee the ground's not wet? Somebody would be washing your car out there, soaking it. Yeah. So it's going to be a bad argument. Same not as valid. this one. Not, not valid. This isn't valid. This isn't valid. Yeah. And as Mark said, this is the, technically, this is the fallacy known as affirming the consequent. It's, an, it's one of the formal fallacies. This is the formal fallacy known as denying the antecedent, and uh, they don't follow the rules. So again, it's a rule-governed system. The rules are very exact. They're exact on purpose, and the, the idea is that everything is proven using exact rules followed exactly, and that's why you have to follow them to the letter, so to speak. Yeah. So. Those are some common deduction errors. We hope that helps you as you learn how to do proofs.